Hello and welcome to the Intensive Care Society State of the Art Conference 2017. My name is Jonathan Downham and I'm endeavouring to live stream across, across Facebook, Periscope and YouTube uh, for the benefit of those people not at the conference and for those who, that are here as well. Um, if you can't watch them live you can watch them on Facebook and YouTube at a later date and I hope they'll prove very, very beneficial. I'm joined by Simon Haywood um, for this chat. Um, Simon goes under the name of At Sono Physio and he's a very active physio with the Ultrasound Pro. Um, and he's presented a poster at this year's conference um, and the uh, title of the poster is Lung Ultrasound Can Optimise the Sequence of Medical uh, and Physiotherapy Treatments During a Lung Whiteout, a Case Report. And that's the paper that you can see behind us there. So without further ado, I'm going to let Simon tell you all about this. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, this is an interesting case that I had about two months ago, and uh, this uh, unfortunate gentleman had some surgery on our cardiothoracic unit, uh, and when he was woken up from sedation, he had had a stroke. Right. He then had a compromised uh, cough as a result, so we were doing a lot of work with him to uh, maintain his airway clearance, uh, and at a later point, a few days later, he started to deteriorate a little bit requiring uh, increased oxygen so as you'd expect chest, chest x-ray was ordered and it showed sort of a hemithorax opacity whiteout however what ter whatever terminology you'd like to use mm -hmm. uh, and pretty much immediately it was during the day I got called to try and help resolve this resolve this whiteout now he hadn't deteriorated too much so I thought I'd give the ultrasound a go, see what I could find, mm -hmm. and by doing so, um, I pretty much found he was sat upright, he was on nasal high flow, sat upright, scanned his left side, and even up here, in the left upper anterior, huge amount of pleural fluid. This was pre-chest x-ray, presumably? No, 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 we had the chest x-ray, right, okay. so the assumption was that this was due to sputum plugging right, and collapse. Okay. okay. So the ultrasound, even high up on his chest, showed a huge amount of fluid and that's, that, that's, that's on the poster behind us and hopefully the videos will be available at some point yep. online as well. So yep. all the scans were done up here that are in the poster and basically a large amount of pleural fluid I fed back to the consultant and they decided to continue with perhaps the idea that it was still collapsed in sputum plug, did a bronchoscopy. I then had the opportunity to scan again after that and it had showed very little difference. There'd been no change in the pleural fluid okay. volume, as you'd so, understand. So which of these diagrams are we at at the moment? So if we're going from the top one. So, we, so if we go from, uh, <laughs> I've got to get Hold used on. to this, uh, that one there. That one there. Yeah, that one there. So we're on to the. That's the x-ray. That's the x-ray. That's the first can, scan. Okay. Second scan down here. I don't okay. think the resolution is particularly good on here. Oh, okay. But it showed no real difference, as you'd expect in the pleural fluid, and there was no significant plug whatsoever okay so another discussion so another scan another discussion and then a drain was inserted at that point which just elicited a huge amount of fluid that just came out of his left chest right okay and on the poster you know it was it was in excess of three liters three and a half liters okay came out of his left chest scanned again after that because I thought I'm just gonna get a serial a number of serial scans to track this change through the the third scan showed very edematous lung tissue mm -hmm. so it wasn't fully aerated it was mm -hmm. a mixture of edematous lung and aerated lung uh, proceeded to use some positive pressure with him at this point because he was now he was now awake they had uh, obviously sedated him for the bronchoscopy but he was now awake again used some positive pressure with him and then that returned that to normal aerated lung presentation on ultrasound with the a lines so and then just to, just so everybody could make sure Another chest X-ray at the end of it, of course, to uh, to make for that, that before and after comparison. So, a couple of questions, really. Um, yeah. What difference do you think using the ultrasound made? Had we not used the ultrasound, what difference would that have made? I think, from a physiotherapy point of view, considering I was, for, for want of a better word, drafted in, referred in to try and do a treatment, which had not done the ultrasound, would have been completely ineffective. Okay. We would have used any by any means possible 
techniques to remove secretions or yeah. excessive secretions yeah. down in that left main bronchus. And that wasn't the issue. That wasn't the issue. Uh, positioning techniques, maybe positive pressure that wasn't going to resolve the, uh, the collapse of the left lung as a result of the effusion. Who knows, maybe some trauma on the other side, yeah. you know, if you're hyperinflating the other side. Yeah. So fundamentally, the ultrasounds differentiated between the reasons that the whiteout had occurred and for want of a better expression made my role at that point hence the optimization and the sequencing my role at that point was not necessary but came in a bit later on once another sure. treatment had been okay. instigated so it stopped us doing pointless treatment and it made sure that we went ra- down the right pathway rather than trying something first didn't work okay well let's try the next thing in this situation they still tried it yes. they still tried in this which kind of gave the case report a little bit of a different spin okay uh, and was interesting discussions backwards and forwards with the with the team. Okay. Uh, but as you said, it was not doing an incorrect treatment, and who knows how long it would have been before that was realised. Yes. Okay. Okay. So hopefully it, it bought it, the right it treatment. Expedited. Forward. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully it expedited. And, and the other question that occurs to me, and I'm not necessarily advocating this because I know some people might start muttering under their breath as they hear this, but if you didn't have an X-ray at either end. So if you hadn't got the, the pre-condition x-ray and the post-condition x-ray, could you, with the ultrasound in your hand, have done the same thing, got to the same conclusion, and treated the patient in the right way? The, the initiation of the imaging, or the chest imaging, as, as a result of the deterioration in the gases and the requirement, oxygen requirements, mm-hmm. in my view, would have triggered me to do a scan regardless, and then I would have picked up or somebody could have picked up on the fluid excessive fluid right in that situation so if the x-ray had been lost you would still have been able to yeah. diagnose and move it forward appropriately yeah it's the, the x-ray just gives that common language that everybody knows about while ultrasound is perhaps lung ultrasound is still in development as people are starting to learn yeah. the language and the te- terminology and getting used to the technology i mean you know x-ray still in many ways remains the gold standard it's our mm-hmm. safety blanket isn't it it's what we feel comfortable with yeah. it's what most people can interpret but I think in your experience and certainly with some of the courses that you're offering and the fact that you've been doing this for some time now um, and you can talk pokers till you're blue in the face, this yeah. conference has done it, SMAC did it, the Critical Care Symposium in Manchester did it, mm-hmm. um, I dare say they might have done it in Antwerp a little bit as well. Um, the ultrasound probe is becoming the tool to have, so much so now that manufacturers are actually producing handheld sets that can plug into your phone, phone, aren't they? Which I believe are less than £3,000. Sounds like a lot of money, but you know, maybe in, I don't know, five years time, they're probably going to be £300. You could probably get the iPhone or the uh, the You must say iPhone in my presence, though. You could probably get the the smartphone and the the probe for similar prices eventually, I would imagine. Absolutely. Thanks, Simon. That's really interesting. Really interesting. A positive outcome. Um, Some of your skills being used in in completely the appropriate way and a good conclusion for the patient because it meant that we didn't drag out the the process that was going to make them better. How did the patient do ultimately? Do you know? Um, No, really well. Really well. Yeah, we went for stroke rehabilitation and that's when I lost track of him, unfortunately. Great. Okay. Yeah. We'll leave it there for now. Um, thanks very much. I thought that was very interesting. Um, I hope you're enjoying listening to these. Uh, we're going to do more of them later as well. Um, we've got at least another two or three to do today. Um, and like I say, they can be li- you can watch them live or you can watch them on uh, Facebook and YouTube later. I hope you're enjoying all this presentation from the Intensive Care Society Conference, uh, State of the Art Conference 2017. Um, it's been a wonderful three days. Um, I'm getting to exhaustion point now, um, but hopefully we can hang on for the rest of the afternoon and uh, hopefully we'll speak to you again soon. Thanks very much.